Matt, I, I mentioned you guys met at a gig. How did your uh, relationship evolve over the years since then? Uh, I mean, I mean, for a long time, for five years, we were just sort of like acquaintances. I mean, we knew each other, but then we would see each other on tour, and then Menomina did some did some tours with the with the National. Um, so we were we were pals, but it wasn't like we were like calling each other uh, or emailing or, or sending sending love letters back and forth or anything um, for a long time. We, you, know, I, you, never, I, you never got them. I didn't open them. That explains why I never. I didn't. Back. They just all the perfume. I just <laughs> I threw them right away. Uh, but uh, but but it was it was about five years um, after we had first met was when we kind of um, started talking about maybe uh, trading ideas and stuff like that. So, and bank and started banking lots of ideas. Well, Brent had already uh, he had a bank. He had a giant bank of 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 bits and pieces of stuff that you had not done anything with that you'd been collecting for like a whatever, like a decade or something like that, or, or, or a long time. And go ahead, what, what, how much, you sent me lots. Yeah, well, you know, w one way I could stay sane is by just improvising ideas and hitting record, and I never have plans Continuously to creating. Yeah, and then so I just kind of keep a little archive of that, and then when it comes time to make a record, I draw from that resource. And mm -hmm. so when Matt asked if I had extra ideas lying around, I had about, about 450 to send to him that didn't already have me singing on them. Wow. Yeah. So I just put it all into like a twelve-hour playlist. Uh, he did. It was it was more than I expected him to send, um, but it was kind of it, it was actually easy to just listen to this twelve-hour thing. And every once in a while, like when I find myself singing along to one of these little bits, some of them were complex and developed. Others were just like a little piano riff or a guitar riff. Uh, but then I would just sort of cherry pick files out of that and put them into another folder that was that I was just calling the moon um, on my laptop, but that's how it started. And at a certain point, you decided to take it from that slow process. You described it as going from 5 miles an hour to 75 miles per hour. Yeah, well, last year. Yeah. Last year. Why was that decision to kind of crank up the pace, Brent? Well, it seemed like we finally had a window of time to do it in. Uh, mm -hmm. The National had finished touring, Trouble Will Find Me, and everybody was taking a little bit of time to do some other projects. And so uh, for the first time since we'd been talking, we had an opportunity to really do it. Matt, you've mentioned two very different inspirations for the lyrics for uh -huh. this album. Uh, the musical Grease yep. and the 80s political punk band The Minutemen. Yep. So the obvious question... And myself. A lot of, it, it, a lot of it is uh, inspired by myself. Yeah. So <laughs> th that one would be uh, kind of assumed, I guess. Yeah. Um, I guess the obvious question is, between those two inspirations, uh, why The Minutemen? Uh, that's a good question. I mean, I mean... It was supposed to be a joking question. But yeah, no, Because no. the obvious question is, what, what's the connection between the two? Between the the uh, Greece and Minutemen, yeah, um, maybe none. I don't know, but uh, the connection that happened with me was that it was it was it was in my brain. It was I was watching. I watched the documentary We Jam Econo. I got really obsessed with that, and uh, and um, it's about Minutemen. It's about Minutemen. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, and um, and then I um, uh, whatever. It just was sort of like my daughter was listening to Greece a lot, and. I was I the documentary made me go back and listen to Double Nickels on a Dime a lot and and I love the way that that record has like twenty different styles on it you know or just all over the place jazz songs acoustic songs punk songs uh, and then yeah so it all just it all sort of it started informing some of the, the the lyrics and melodies and everything on 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 this record and mm -hmm. um, uh, it was all kind of organic I, I kind of let all that stuff just mix together however it feels like it it, it wants to and it did here yeah and and you said you. I mean, in terms of yourself being an inspiration, you said you arrived somewhere at something kind of essential about yourself you hadn't really struck before, about your childhood and things th like that. I think, I mean, a lot of this was also the documentary, um, We Jam Econo, that, that, that I was so struck by uh, how these two kind of misfit friends uh, who were friends since, since kids found themselves and found their place in the world and society through music by making noise in their mom's basement, you know, mm -hmm. in Dee Boone's mom's basement. And I think... I think that made me really, and my daughter is starting to discover music, and she's starting her identity is starting to form. So it made me sort of think about like when was it I went from being a, a sort of a, a, a terrified, insecure, you know, teenager, twelve, thirteen year old into somebody that kind of felt like they had, knew where their place was or, or felt connected to the world on a bigger level. And it was kind of I think when my sister brought home records like The Smiths and and. Um, and violent femmes and stuff like that. It was like before that. It was it was a lot of um, Van Halen and, and whatever was like in my you know the whatever the kids were listening to or whatever. Uh, and, and I didn't uh, I didn't feel connected to that stuff. But suddenly, 
like you know Morrissey and and Michael Stipe and REM, and I was like, oh, those I I, I understand those people. I feel I feel yeah. like it made me just feel connected to the world more, and and that's how my identity started. To, I think I found confidence and felt less alone in the world. And that, that think, first yeah. time you discover music that you really relate to, not just what you've been exposed yeah. to uh, in your environment. Where you feel like it's like, oh, it's more than just entertainment. Music is like, it can help you figure yourself out. Yeah. Is that something you resonated with too in this process of working together? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> Matt refers to this record sometimes as uh, an album, Guilty Pleasures Minus the Guilt. And I, I agree with that. It's like we, you know, we didn't come to it with any preconceived notion of what we wanted it to be necessarily we, we more just tried to follow the song wherever it wanted to lead us and 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 so it's like in some so in some ways like each song is like it, it's on its own identity quest you know and um and sometimes we would radically transform songs as, we, as we'd pass them back and forth we'd we'd try it doing it this way and then would, the things would get completely convoluted and shuffled around and 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 the time signature and tempo would change and then we'd move on from there so it was very there's a lot of stages of evolution and um was there more freedom to pursue that and pursue each song in that way in a in a I don't want to call it a side project but in a collaboration like this is there more freedom to explore in that way? Well, this this project felt super free to me because you know we I, I didn't really tell anybody about it. The guys in the national knew about it, but um, I didn't tell anyone about it. So it, it was just kind of like this fun, really. Uh, it was just really fun to make a record with my friend Matt, you know, and like I didn't. I didn't tell anyone about it because I didn't want to like have anybody to impress or anybody to disappoint. You know, mm -hmm. it was just just doing it for doing it. It's interesting because technology makes these kinds of projects more feasible, and at the same time, they interrupt people's expectations. I guess of a of an artist's career arc or trajectory. Mm -hmm. Is that something that was on your mind while you were working on this? I mean, I um, no, it wasn't on my mind. I, I mean, I was I, I was uh, I'm aware of uh, somewhat aware of of. Of my, uh, I guess, whatever position in this weird indie rock world. I mean, it's like I, in the national, it has a lot of records, and people think of the national and think of me a certain way, uh, which I, I don't know how how accurate all that is. But I wasn't trying to, I wasn't trying to change anyone's impression of me. But I knew that I knew that uh, I knew that this would be as it should be. It would be looked at in comparison. I think both of us know that this would be compared to our other work, yeah. uh, but we didn't care, you know. I, I didn't, whatever whatever kind of comparisons that would make, I was I, I welcomed it. I mean, I was I was thinking of it kind of in somewhat in terms of like, of uh, of of the other work, you know. Like I I, I uh, I'm, I'm totally creatively satisfied with everything I do in the national. So it wasn't like I was. I was I needed something that I wasn't getting out of the national. It was just I was curious to see what would happen if Brent and I made made some songs together. And uh, yeah, I find that really interesting because now there's the opportunity to do that because of technology and stuff. But at the same time, you know, mentally you just have to embrace that freedom to do that and and not compare it too much to your previous work or try to put it in that context. I'm mm -hmm. I'm assuming. What how was it for you, Brent? Yeah, I mean, well, any creative collaboration is going to you know have an unpredictable like emergent like I you know feeling or, or, or tonality and and so like I was kind of I was pretty surprised by the aspects of of, of music that working with Matt had brought out in me and 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 a little bit, bit surprised with the kind of the, the lyrics that that the music brought out in Matt so um yeah. yeah I think that's that's actually really so much of the joy of making music is that process of discovery of like what what like what will the, the fusing of these you know of these ideas result mm -hmm. in I want to ask about performing this material, Matt. Uh, the the national requires you deliver these emotionally intense mm -hmm. performances. How does your approach to performing uh, with Alvi differ from fronting the national? It doesn't that much. I mean, I I, I have to get emotionally involved in in it to be able to do it. And like I um, I mean, this record has songs that are on the surface maybe uh, that feel maybe have a different personality maybe to them when you when you listen to them, but. Uh, uh, underneath certain levels of, of, of presentation, they're, they're all they're all emotional songs to me. They're all personal to me. And, and so, uh, when we perform, when Elvi performs live, I go to the same place. I get inside my head and I and I I dive in with with all, everything and 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 I let go of, of all the of all the reality. I, I I I try to forget that there's a bunch of people in the room. I try to forget that there's lights on us and stuff and and just go to a place and and it's a it's a it's a weird place, you know, to perform. Um, How is it different? Like you, you said it's a little bit of a different personality, a little bit of a weird from place to go to. My normal personality. Yeah. Um um performing 
it, it's not that different. I don't. It's not that different than the national. Like mm-hmm. uh, when I walk on stage, whether it's with the national or with its uh, with Elvi, uh, I have to. I have to. Uh, do I have to go to a weird spot and, and to enable, just to just to feel comfortable? You're on, you're up on an elevated stage. You're you know lights are on you. There's a, there's you know hundreds or thousands of faces, and it doesn't actually matter if there's twenty faces staring right at you or twenty thousand. It feels almost exactly the same. It's just as odd. It's just an, you know I'm not a, I'm not a I'm not somebody who's a who's an entertainer you know song and dance man who likes to be watched you know mm-hmm. so I try to forget that I'm being watched I'm, I'm aware of it and I'm learning to embrace it more but I kind of go I I, I, uh, I drink wine and I and I just try to like sort of and I, clo- I mean most of the time my eyes are closed you know 80 percent of our That's shows the best way for you to access I go all inside of that, I yeah. go way inside and and and, and i I go crazy and it's fun and it's cathartic and, and um you know and, and and some of it's a performance but a lot of it is is not a lot of it's just like a truly um, a real emotional reaction yeah, yeah. otherwise it's not it's, then I feel like I'm a, like a animatronic bear or something if, unless I'm if it's not real if, you know so I have to get real with it or else I just I wouldn't be able to do it at all you know uh, before I let you go um, I want to ask you guys about about Paris. Really quickly, yeah. um, among the targets was a concert at Bataclan. Music fans yeah. and industry people were were victims. Mm-hmm. As performers yourself, how have you been thinking about all of that in the uh, aftermath? Brent, I'll start with you. <laughs> I mean, how can you even use words to like properly convey the mixture of like despair and sadness and fury and hopelessness and sorrow? And I mean, I I don't know how to even talk about it. Um, how do you reason with people who don't reason? You know. Um, uh, but I feel like, um, you know, so we I, we we did play a, a show in New York um, a couple hours after I learned about that. And it did occur to me, like, um, you know, I want to be here. Like, this is what I, this these, these are the people I want to be with. This is how I want to spend my life. And, you know, if, who knows, you know, when your time is up. And, like, if my time's going to be up now, then that's, that's, this is how I want it to be. So, like. Um, I just, I don't know. I just, my, my heart's just so broken about it. Well, uh, I know it's seeping into all of our contexts and all of our minds. I was kind of feeling a lot when you were playing that, uh, Mm -hmm. that first song. Um, and we're going to hear another, I hope right now you have one last song for us, Matt. We do. We're going to do, um, um, a song called need a friend. Need Um, a friend. Yeah. Okay. You guys can head back over there.